continuing our study and analysis of the Francis Scott Key Bridge collapse in Baltimore, Maryland, after the container ship Dolly crashed into it, you recall we mentioned in the first video of this series, my concern there was inadequate protection around the fracture critical superstructure pillar supports of the Key Bridge. A huge number of you left many comments and questions regarding this whole topic of these concrete dolphins that are meant to protect bridges and why they weren't in use here in Baltimore at the Key Bridge. Many of you also questioned how these small concrete dolphins could even hold up against large 100,000 ton container ships like the Dolly. So we're going to look closer at this and I'm going to show you side by side with the world-class Sunshine Skyway Bridge in Tampa to see how their implementation of concrete dolphins might have saved the Key Bridge. To perform our analysis and simulation here, we spared no expense to bring you the latest, greatest, highest tech AI tools imaginable, which is basically me dragging my little cutout of the Dolly across the screen. I promise you it will look cool. We are going to be playing with everything tonight. Playing what if games with everything from the path of the ship to making it go backwards and forwards in time to see what made the ship angle like it did into the pillars. Okay, so I want to take a look here and, and just make sure we have our bearings right with the position. Now the ship came in right here in this angle right here. And I don't think that it slammed into the pillars at all. I think it did a glancing blow right around this side. Because the dolly has such a wide overhang, I believe this overhang sheared through the first pillar and possibly the second one. And then it was the bridge falling on it that actually brought it to a stop. I enhanced this photo from the NTSB to show you as close up as we could get so far with the most detail of the entire uh, pillar arrangement here. So here's one, two, three, four pillars. This is where they were. And they all rose vertically from here. And then this is the protective bumper around it, which is essentially nothing. It's a few layers of what looks like either wood or rubber. I can't really tell. It just seems to me that the ship did not crash into the front of it. It looks like it's just scraped along the side of it. And the overhang here is what sheared through these two pillars. I don't think these two were touched by it. I think they just fell. They just fell under the weight of the collapsing bridge. So this was more of a just a glancing blow. I think. And so you can see here when you look at this concrete dolphin over here, it's probably about 30 feet wide. The problem with it is it looks to me like it's too far below this line right here. And I think that it should have been closer to the ship this way. And if this concrete dolphin had been placed closer to the ship, more in this direction. The ship would have just bounced off of it, kind of like a bumper, like when you're doing a pinball. It should have just glanced off of it and, and maybe changed the course just enough to make it miss. And then I believe they should have had a second one over here, even closer. This one's too far away. Based on the length of this ship, which I believe is at 958 feet or something like that, it's close to 1,000 feet. This looks like we're at about 500 feet from the pillars. So that's too far away. That's okay if you want to have a primary one here. But you need to have a secondary one over here and further this way, closer towards the ship. So that any other boat that tries to come into this angle here will glance off of it. Okay, so now what I can do now is separate the up here from the bridge and superimpose it. Here's what the bridge looked like before the collapse. And the ship was actually supposed to be perfectly straight and going out this way, right through the peak of the bridge. That's where the center of the channel was. And so the ship was supposed to go like this and would have gone on happily ever after. So this angle that you see it at is the angle that it was when it hit the bridge. And so the ship didn't really turn that much. I know in the video it really looks like it took a massive side turn, but I believe it's because of just the con the condensing of the of everything everything, the background into the foreground with the telephoto lens that was used. I can play with it back and forth there, but it's hard to really tell what angle that's going at there as it hits and goes back. See, look at that. Boom. So it was coming at this angle and then turns around like this. It's just so hard to tell. But I'm sure the Voyage data recorder will have all of this information. Now, you remember when I showed you this from marinetraffic.com, the track, when it veers off course, it doesn't look very much, maybe 15 degrees at the most. But as I adjust my slider to move forwards and backwards through time, it just seems that that telephoto lens seems to accentuate what that angle looks like. But here is where the four pillars were that it hit. So you'll see in the picture, if you remember from the previous slide, it sat right about like this. Remember where this dolphin was right here, this concrete dolphin in relation to the ship, right between these two 
the white and the yellow one. See how it's situated right between the two here? So I believe we have this very accurate here. So the problem was is because you had this particular concrete dolphin not in the right spot. It should have been further this way. So what I propose is that we bring in another one here. Let me move the ship out of the way. And you possibly you make it a little bigger and you put it closer. You put it within maybe a couple of hundred feet of it like this. That way, if the ship was going to come in, it would have maybe bounced off of this one. But of course, we know it didn't because it came in like this. But at least it would bounce off of this one and maybe just change the course enough to bump it out this way, you see. And you probably would want to have one of these over here as well, similar to this. And maybe something over here. And maybe another one like over here. The idea is you got to protect these pillars because this is a non-redundant design here. This is what we call a fracture critical design. So this is the way they should have done it like this. It would have bounced off of this guy and kept going like that. And who knows, it maybe maybe bounced off of this other one too and pushed it even further out. But of course, anytime you'll have a collision with a dolphin like this, the ship is probably going to be heavily damaged and that would be the end of their voyage right then and there. So they will have to make repairs. Okay, so for example, here's two of the concrete dolphins. I'm assuming these are concrete here near one of the other sets of pillars here. But to see the problem with these is look how far away they are from it. So a larger boat can kind of come in and still bypass it, but angle it and head right in towards the pillars here and it can still hit them. And notice how the bumpers around the pillar, there's really not much meat there. You usually, you would want some kind of distance here. And I would even go so far as to do what they did at the Skyway Bridge here in Florida, is they built sort of like a beach around it. So now if a boat comes in, it'll just have a, a landing right there. The boat will basically just beach itself before it even gets to here. But you have to have enough beach around it so that the overreach of the bow of the boat doesn't still reach forward and hit into the pillars here. Right here, I can see that these little uh, concrete dolphins here, I think are too small. They're too small and too far away from the pillars. Now, if you want to have this one here as a primary set, sure. But then you really need to have a much bigger one right here along with the beachhead. You know, here's a further zoomed out shot that shows you um, the disadvantage of having this system with this little dolphin right over here. Because look how big the boat is, see? And the boat can still make it past this one and angle right in towards the pillars. And you can see there was plenty of protection for the power lines here, but they just really needed a lot more than what they had here. This is why the dolly was able to slip right by everything and still make it into the concrete pillars. So this is a pretty large crane that they brought in here, which I presume they're going to start pulling away these sections of the truss with it. See, here's the other dolphin over here, see? So the boat was able to scoot right by this dolphin, probably never even touched it, and just angled right in here. And this is where I think that the Dolly ship did not direct head-on hit this. However, what I think happened here is that it came here and just glanced off of it. And the problem is, even though it just glanced it over here, the overhang of the boat and the bow was enough that the bow itself actually, I think right up here, is what sheared through those pillars and it probably only sheared through the two pillars that were here and the other two over here just fell in sympathy because they couldn't withstand the load there was nothing protecting any of these smaller pillars over here and same with the other side of the bridge up here all of these were left unprotected so if any boat was to slam into those the bridge still would have come down so this whole system here just this just looks like a minimal amount of protection to satisfy a few key decision makers back in the day see there's the tiny little dolphin right there See that? And that looks like it's barely 20 or 30 feet wide. It should be about three times that width. They have a great close-up video here of the Sunshine Skyway Bridge. So here you can see all of the large 60-foot wide concrete dolphins here protecting these pylons. And then, of course, here's the main pylons right here. And you can see how much closer it is. This looks like it's maybe 300 feet away. And just look at the size of these rock islands that they built around it, these barriers, so that if a ship were to come up through the channel here and miss and aim right towards the pillar, hopefully it would beach itself. 
Now, a number of you have left an, a lot of comments for me uh, concerned about the strength of these concrete dolphins and whether or not they could stop such a large container ship like the Dolly. Well, listen to this explanation here from the engineers who built this Sunshine Skyway bridge. The most prominent safety features are four protective dolphins situated 300 feet on both sides of each pier. Each dolphin is an imposing mass of cast-in-place concrete, steel and stone, 60 feet in diameter, 16 feet above the waterline, with interlocking steel sheet piles driven 20 feet into the bottom of the bay. The dolphins can absorb 380 million foot-pounds of energy. Inconceivable as it would be, if a dolphin failed, a ship still couldn't reach the main piers because of 8-foot-high stone barrier island surrounding each pier and the 12-foot steel reinforced concrete collar around each pier foundation just above water level. The main piers were designed to withstand ship impacts of up to 12 million pounds. They were designed to withstand the force of a Gulf hurricane. Okay, so I took a screenshot here from uh, the Envato's website on this video, and now I want to bring in the Dolly ship and let's see how it fits into this scenario. Now, it's, it's a reasonable approximation, and I'm sure the boat is really going to be shorter than this, not as tall. But I just want to illustrate the point to you that what would happen if the dolly was coming through the port here, and it just barely goes by this concrete dolphin and let's say it's able to make it past this concrete dolphin for whatever reason it comes in at a sharp angle then boom it should beach itself against these rocks here that are surrounding the pylon and now we don't know how far it would take before it comes to a complete stop does it bash into the pillar anyway well we don't know it's probably not likely to happen it'll probably go about like this so the bow is sticking out to right here so ideally when a cargo ship comes in here and it beaches itself on this island, you want it to be able to stop in time so that this front overhang point of the bow, the very tip of the bow, doesn't crash into the very pylon that you're trying to rescue. So I hope they did their thinking on this. And at least here, you know, people were talking about the cost. Well, you know what? I can add a few more rocks all the way around here just to increase the width and protection barrier zone. So I'm hoping they did the math and everything correctly on that and were planning for the biggest ships you could possibly plan for right now. But definitely here you could see how having these dolphins so close to the pylon here is a lot better than this scenario here where their dolphin, as you can see, is 500 feet away. It's so much better than the scenario we had back up here with the Francis Scott Key Bridge because their dolphin is 500 feet away. And this yellow dolphin right here is what I proposed is the same approximate distance to what we have at the Skyway Bridge. So this is the one that I think would have protected us because it may have made the ship glance this way. And also coming in from this angle, there's the dolly and the dolly would just beach itself right here on these rocks instead of hitting the pylon, thus this would protect the bridge. And if it veered way off course and came over this way, well, who knows? Some people think, well, can it stop them or not? Well, if it hits multiples at, at once, that's even more energy dissipated by these guys. But remember, these are huge. These concrete dolphins are 60 feet wide and they stand up out of the water 16 feet up. The strength of the concrete dolphins at the Sunshine Skyway Bridge was put to the test and it passed because the day before the grand opening ceremony in 1987 of the newly opened bridge, if you can believe it, a 70 foot shrimping vessel slammed into it and the vessel was damaged so badly they had to drag it out to sea and let it sink. They held their grounds and of course it's a much smaller ship. Well certainly uh, whoever's in charge at all of these ports around the country and especially I worry about the Golden Gate Bridge. Is that enough? Have they really looked at that recently? Do they need to build islands around? Do they need to build these little rocky islands around the north and south tower of the Golden Gate Bridge as well? But certainly at all of these ports around the country the leaders there need to be doing an assessment here of what do we have? We saw what happened in Baltimore. Can that happen here? Are we protected? What do we need to do? And in some cases, it may not have to be the most expensive thing in the world to build a couple of concrete dollies or maybe just bring in a bunch of rocks and dump them there. And that's all you have to do. But to do nothing at all 
just invites more and more of this exact same failure mode. So I got this chart here from Transport Geography, and it shows us really why the containers are so big now. If you remember back in the 70s, container ships were really more or less like this, so about 215 meters. And they started to get bigger and bigger uh, throughout the 80s. And then around 2015 or so, you can see here they have this uh, new Panamax. And this is the class that the Dolly is in. And the reason why is the Panama Canal locks were enlarged to accommodate larger container ships, right? So the max, I believe, is what they're showing here, 366 meters. And the dolly comes in right at 299 meters, so about 300 meters. So this is the class that it's in, and it's amongst the biggest class out there. Now, they are in the middle of building a couple of others that are even bigger now. But you can see how the, the ships have just gotten larger and larger throughout the years. And I think we're going to see that become the norm now to get the economies of scale going. I'm going to continue to monitor everything here for you on the Francis Scott Key Bridge Collapse. And in the meantime, you can check this video out right here, which is on the FIU Bridge Collapse. That was one of my best engineering videos yet. So thank you so much for tuning in again today and stay tuned for the next one and we'll see you on that next one.